So in this video, I want to talk about the development of MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. So staph aureus is a gram positive cocci that you find predominantly on the skin. So if you want to think about treatment of staph aureus, you're probably going to come up with beta lactam antibiotics, particularly the penicillins, which are generally very good against gram positive bacteria. So we always knew that Staph aureus is very good in making beta-lactamases. So beta-lactamases are this little enzyme that the bacteria produce that are going to destroy the beta-lactam ring. And as soon as the beta-lactam ring is destroyed of the antibiotics, obviously this antibiotic is not going to work anymore. However, we developed the so-called second-generation penicillins, which includes methicillin, nafcillin, oxacillin, and dicloxacillin. And they have this very bulky side chain that protects the beta-lactam ring. And therefore, they are beta-lactamase resistant and are very effectively in the treatment of staph aureus. Please note that methicillin is the first one that came out. However, it has been taken off the market because of some adverse effect. So you're going to find now nafcillin, oxacillin, and dicloxacillin. So as long as staph aureus is sensitive against this second-generation penicillin, we call the staph aureus MSSA, standing for methicillin sensitive staph aureus. And please note, methicillin just stands here as an example for a second generation. So it means that any of those would work against MSSA. So as we use the second generation penicillins so often against staph aureus, staph aureus came up with a plan to become resistant against those second generation penicillins. So what staph aureus did Staph aureus changed its PBPs, the penicillin binding proteins. So the penicillin binding proteins are these molecules that are found in the inner membrane of bacteria that are responsible for the cross-linking of the cell wall. And remember, the PBPs are the targets of all beta-lactam antibiotics. So as soon as Staph aureus changed the PBPs, which are encoded on the so-called MACA gene, none of the beta-lactam antibiotics are going to work anymore against staph aureus because none of them would recognize this changed PBPs. And if staph aureus has this changed PBPs, we call the staph aureus methicillin-resistant staph aureus. And this tells you that you cannot use any second generation or any other beta-lactam antibiotic anymore to treat this staph aureus. So what can you do? Well, the only solution is you need to switch to a different antibiotic class. You need to get out of this beta-lactam group. And so you could, for example, use vancomycin because there's another cell wall synthesis inhibitor which works slightly different, which has a different target. Or you can use any of those drugs that I have listed here. Please note that all the drugs that I have listed here, with the exception of linezolid, are only IV available. So linezolid is the only drug of this newer agent that is a lot used against MRSA that you're also going to get in an oral form. In a lot of hospitals, however, you can still use tetracyclines, clindamycin, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole to treat MRSA. And those are also oral agents. I want to finish up by talking about ceftarolin. This is actually an advanced generation cephalosporin that you can use in the treatment of MRSA. So this might not make sense to you now, because we just said to treat MRSA you need to get out of the beta-lactam group. But ceftarolin is the only exception. For some reason, this advanced generation cephalosporin can recognize the modified PBPs of MRSA. This concludes the video about the development and treatment of MRSA.